copper. Copper, derived from the Latin coprum, after the island of Cyprus, was mined during the Roman Empire. It is one of a handful of elements from the periodic table to occur naturally as a mineral. Hence, the name most people use to refer to this mineral is native copper, to differentiate it from copper coming from industrial smelting. This metal's distinctive color, copper red streak, density, and unique properties make it easy to identify. Crystals do occur, and most often are in the cubic system. But copper will often be arborescent or filiform instead. Copper is malleable, ductile, and sectile, and is an excellent conductor of heat and electricity. Because of these properties, it is one of the most in-demand metals in the electronics industry. In modern days, copper is often used in electric wires and as a heatsink for CPUs and motherboards. Native copper is rarely found in nature in its pure form and often has trace amounts of silver, iron, antimony, bismuth, mercury, and or arsenic. Native copper is highly reactive and tends to react with oxygen and carbon to form a slew of different mineral species. It will most often transform into malachite, azurite, or coprite. Its oxidized color range from green to red, brown, brown, and black. But do not worry about your native copper specimens becoming oxidized and bleak with time. They might have a surprisingly new usefulness in the not so distant future. That's right, human made oxidized copper compounds have been observed since 1986 to be efficient at being superconductors. You see, even with basic electric cables used to supply a city with electricity, some of the current is lost to heat as the electrons collide with the ions that make up the wire. This phenomenon is called electric resistance. The longer the cable, the bigger the resistance. A superconductor, just like a superhero, saves all these now coupled electrons to the finish line without any loss. Superconductors have the potential to revolutionize modern civilization as we know it and make electricity both plentiful and cheap. So then, what are we waiting for? The only drawback is that they necessitate extremely low temperatures and a costly coolant to function. However, discovered copper oxides of all stripes have worked as superconductors at higher and higher temperatures over the years. Will the first superconductor working at room temperature be a copper oxide compound? Only time will tell. One thing is for sure, keep holding on to that ugly copper nugget. Maybe it will help you solve one of humanity's most pressing material engineering problem. For more on everything about minerals, visit my channel Mindex. Thank you for sticking to the end and please do not forget to caldera the like and subscribe buttons. Peace out. Wow, wow, wow.